I'm not going to talk about what this means yet, continuous growth and decay. Let's introduce it more naturally. Example six. If I, Jason Barnett, invest $1, yeah, Mr. Moneybags over here, if I invest $1 at 100% interest, okay, now we're talking, for one year, complete the table below. So this is a silly example. I'm only investing a dollar, a hundred percent interest rate. Bear with me. Okay. This table is going to say, what's my amount in my account after a single year for various ends? Maybe one, two, 12, 365, 525,600 minutes. If you don't get the reference, that's fine. So we're just going to complete this table. So remember that A of T is P, principal. Forgot to Google the answer. <laughs> times 1 plus R over N to the NT. So specifically, our A of 1, that's going to be our principal is $1. 1 times, we don't have to write the 1. 1 plus R. Our rate is 100%, which is 1, over n to the n times t, which is also 1. So this is what we're looking at. We just have to plug in different values of n. If you plug in n equals 1, then a of 1 is going to give you 2. Right? It's going to be 1 plus 1 over 1 to the one-th power. And you can keep on doing this and fill in this table. I'm going to save you a little calculator effort. It'd be great practice to pause the video and do this yourself, but I'll save you the calculator effort if you want. One, then uh, A of one is going to be two. We'll have two dollars, right? 100% interest rate, it's going to double after a year if it only compounds once. But remember, if it compounds twice, that means we get 50% interest twice. So that second 50% is going to also compound on that first part. So it's going to be $2.25. If we compound 12 times, that's going to be about $2.71. And we could have some extra decimals. If we have 365 days that it compounds. If it compounds every single day in a non-leap year, that's going to be 2.718127. What's happening here? Remember that the more and more we compound, right, the more frequently compound, we talked about that with Janet in the last video, the more it compounds, the more money we're making. But notice that we can't just make infinite money by compounding really, really fast, right? There's a big difference, relatively speaking, between these first two values, compounding annually and semi-annually, an extra quarter. But the difference between compounding 2 and 12, uh, it's actually also kind of big, but 2 and 12 was a big change as well. The difference between compounding monthly and compounding daily is not even a cent, right? And if we compound every minute, that's the last one. Every minute of the day gets compounded. 2.718279. So again, it's identical to the first three decimal places here. And we could keep on going compound every second, compound every millisecond. And you're just going to see that these values are approaching something. And this number they're approaching is called Euler's number. Okay? These are approaching something called Euler's number.
as it is pronounced Euler, not Euler. It's Euler's number, and we write Euler's number E. And E is an irrational number, and it's about 2.7182. Well, it's pretty much that. It's, a, it's about, but it goes on forever. All right. So I actually need to double check why there's number. Let's get some more decimal places. I want to make sure I'm giving you guys uh, some good stuff. And again, if you're using a calculator and want to do Euler's number, you can literally just type E, 2.718281828468, and it goes on forever. It never stops. Irrational number, kind of like pi. And this number, Euler's number, it pops up in so many places. And it's kind of a, just a great standard in general for comparing different things. Um, we'll talk more about that standard and there's actually really, really awesome rabbit holes we could go on for how many places it pops up, but probability, statistics, calculus, um, a bunch of, bunch of places that this number naturally appears. Okay. But I don't want to talk about it too much in this video because we'll be here for an hour, but there are plenty of videos on the YouTube that have really cool stuff about this. All right, so let's move on. Um, oh, this is continuous growth. I said I'd mention it later. This is the difference. If it's compounded or not continuous growth, right, that means if it's compounded annually, the money's staying the same, and then boom, you get paid a year of interest. If it's compounding semi-annually, Money is staying the same, boom, six months of interest. Staying the same, boom, six months of interest. Even if it's compounding every day, the same, little interest, same, little interest, same, little interest. This is for continuously compounding. So if it's growing continuously, that's where Euler's number pops up. And that's what continuous growth and decay is all about. Okay. So this is often for like, if we think about the mass of something that's growing, that would be continuous growth. Whereas if we think of a population of people growing, that's not continuous, right? There's never one and a half people, all right? There's two people and then there's three, okay? Uh, for example, that's the difference between continuous growth and non-continuous growth or discrete so if we're looking at continuous interest, we have a formula for that. It's much nicer. Compare this to our compound interest formula. This looks much nicer. Right? Instead of that whole thing in the parentheses, it's just an E now. And then the exponent is a little different, but it's very, very close. So again, just like before, P is the principal. It's starting about <laughs> starting investment. All right. Just like before, R is the interest rate. Just like before, T is the number of years. Don't have to worry about N at all. Let's do some problems. Example seven, how much does Janet, good old Janet, from example four, have after 10 years? If it compounded continuously. Ah. Well, let's use the formula. Go back to example four. What did we have? She was investing $2,000. That was her P. She wanted it for 10 years, I think. Yep, 10 years. And her interest rate 
was 2.75%. Remember to write it as a decimal. So then after 10 years, oops, this is going to be A of 10. She's going to have, whoa, what was that? Use this formula. P, 2000, times E to the R, 0 0.0275, times T, which is 10. Plug it into a calculator. And again, on Desmos, this is not too bad. Desmos, you can just type 2000 times E raised to the R, 0 0.0275. Oops, parentheses are important. Times T. 2000, or right, hold on, I'm gonna write this down, 2633.06. And this is in dollars and cents. How much more is she making? Remember, the, the more it compounds, the more you're making. How much more is she making if it compounded continuously? Let's go back to example four and look. Example four said uh, if it compounded quarterly, it'd be 26, 30, 58. If it was monthly, it'd be 26, 32, 23. This is the monthly amount. Oh boy, we're getting an extra 83 cents. Woohoo! Good thing it's compounding continuously. Again, continuous growth means it's growing all the time, whereas compound interest means you're only getting that interest payment every once in a while, which is normal. Okay, but continuous growth is very, very common for uh, like masses and stuff or height. If you had exponential, hopefully you don't have exponential height growth. Well, maybe for a portion of your life, but no, it doesn't really work that way. Uh, let's uh, generalize to some more things with E. Okay. So, remember earlier, we said this is exponential growth. And uh, this is sometimes decay. Right? A was a starting value. And if B was bigger than 1, then it was growth. And if B was between 0 and 1, it was decay. This is review. This is from the first video here. Well, we're going to have something very, very similar with a different formula. So this growth rate is really good if things are doubling, if things are discrete, not continuous. If things are like doubling every so often, tripling every so often, getting multiplied by one and a half every so often, growing by 9% every so often. But if it's growing continuously, we use the second formula. And notice that it's the same, almost the exact same form. And in fact, if you write e to the rt like this, because remember, this is the same thing as e to the rt, then this is just our b value here. And so these really are the same formula. But we use one for continuous growth. So A is still the starting. And this time, if R is a positive number, then this inside is bigger than one. Maybe our growth rate. And if R is a negative number, then this inside, which is our B value, if R is negative, this inside's less than one. It's going to be decay. So let's use this. One last example. Example eight. Growth or decay. Part A. Y equals 2 times E to the 0 0.75 times T. The main thing here is just to not get these two things confused. Do not get this confused with this. One, it matters whether B is bigger than 1 or less than 1. And the other, it matters whether R is positive or negative. So just have your notes clear. 
And you can always check your work on Desmos. Right, R is positive here, so we know it's growth. <laughs> All right, let's, ch let's check our answers. Does this look like exponential growth? Y equals two times E raised to the 0 0.75 T. Yeah, as we move from left to the right, we're getting bigger. We're going uphill. Growth. Or B. Y equals 2e to the negative 0.57t. Well, now r is negative. r is the coefficient of t up there. So it's going to be decay. Could check that with Desmos as well. Last one is equal to y equals 2e to the 5t. r is very positive. It's positive 5. So it's growth. That's how you do these problems. Good luck. Enjoy. Have fun. Enjoy it. Laugh a little bit when you're doing math. Oh, this problem's a decay problem. Oh, ha, ha. No, that's a little weird. Bye-bye.